introduction here. So we have Marie Moldy. You guys know her. Some of you do. A client solution specialist with Data Central. Uh, she's been a speaker at some of our events before. Thanks for being with us. And she's going to share uh, some new menu trends uh, using bourbon as an ingredient. And then we have Bo Taylor Beckman who's with us, and uh, he is the um, the director of Single Barrel Select, and works with the um, the, the Sazerac Group, which has multiple brands and and that you all know well, and we've had at our events many many times. And I love what's on the top of your shelf in the back; that looks really good. So uh, so we're gonna um, get started here, and so let's go to Marie first. Perfect. All right, thank you, Kevin. But bourbon is found on over half of restaurant menus across the US. So today it's on 53% of US menus and we can see that the trend is really quite strong. Uh, so here we can see across all segments of the restaurant industry, bourbon has a very strong trend. So in QSR, it's gonna be more commonly found in things like dessert applications or as a burger sauce, for example. But also if we look at menu launches over the past five years, bourbon is more commonly featured in food launches than it is in beverage launches. So here we're looking at that common application of meat entrees and looking at Cheddar's and Logan's and Eat and Park. Uh, we have the bourbon bacon burger, the bacon boss burger and the bourbon barbecue brisket burger. And then lastly, and I'm also a registered dietitian and I, as a hobby, I follow a lot of food blogs. And I think it's interesting that bourbon also uh, lends itself to healthy items. You know, it's not what we're looking at here. We're looking at bourbon and dessert launches. With those, I really wanted to paint the picture of bourbon as certainly a trending ingredient and also a very versatile item that happens on all menu categories uh, today. It's good. I came here to get drunk, bet on horses, maybe meet a girl and have a good weekend. I didn't think that was going to turn into 10 years. You know, I'm not from the South and I never really pretend to cook Southern food. But I think as a chef, you can't live in a place and not be influenced by your surroundings. To me, tradition is something that's a lot. Tradition is something that changes constantly. Tradition is something that's a living. Hello, everybody. How are you? Um, so I'm, I'm so uh, sad that we can't all be together in Louisville because I know we were supposed to be in my restaurant and we're supposed to be eating and drinking together. So uh, this is the next best thing. But consuming or eating the alcohol um, doesn't taste very good. Um, so in, in most of the applications where I use bourbon, I actually reduce it down. Um, and I will create a, a, a bourbon flavored liquid that is free of alcohol, or at least free of most alcohol. And basically all you have to do with that is, is reduce it. I usually reduce it by a third. Um, that will evaporate the alcohol. It will concentrate the flavor of your bourbon, um, and it will create a, a, a nice versatile uh, sort of a bourbon concoction. I'm doing pork chops. So I've got some nice yummy pork chops in here. And what I want to do is take this flavor and put it into that pork chop. I'm going to chop up a little bit of garlic. Just a rough chop since we're not going to uh, actually use the garlic, it's just for the flavoring. Put it in my pork marinade bag. I've got some soy sauce. About two tablespoons of soy sauce will go in here. We got Worcestershire, about a tablespoon of Worcestershire. And then I'm going to do about one tablespoon of brown sugar. So I don't want the bourbon to be hot. And this is cool down enough where I can put it in there. So that's my marinade. I just shake it around. It's a very simple uh, a marinade. Like I can smell the bourbon in here. So I'm gonna throw that in there. Now what you do need is um, time. Time is a great, time not the herb, but time is in the passing of time. Um, so I like to marinate these for a good uh, 10 hours, 10 to 12 hours. Uh, it really gives you enough time to sort of get the flavors in there. And Normally I would use a, a vac machine, 
but I don't have a vacuum machine at home. So we're going to kind of play by ear. But there's your pork marinade in a Ziploc bag. Uh, and I'm going to leave that in the fridge for 10 to 12 hours. And you can already see the color of the pork has become darker. It's picked up the marinade. It's ready to go. You can grill these, you can pan fry them, uh, you can roast them, uh, but whatever you do, you have to be careful because it will burn very quickly. You want to pat it nice and dry. And while I'm getting that warmed up, I think a 10-year-old bourbon gives you an incredible complexity, um, but also keeps it within cost, so you're not going to break the bank on that. So I'm going to chop up some shallots, some garlic. Let's see if this is hot. And this sauce that I'm doing with it is um, a very popular sauce that we've had at my restaurant for a while. Um, and they basically call it a bourbon grade mustard sauce. It's really just a reduction of bourbon, chicken stock, uh, and we just fold in a, a nice high quality grain mustard right at the end. And I think these uh, steaks are about about three quarters of an inch thick. Um, and it's really nice because you're going to get flavor on both sides. Um, it, every fight is going to have flavor versus a really thick cut pork chop, which no matter how long you marinate it, it's never going to penetrate quite through the middle of it. Which means though, the cooking time on this is going to be very fast. Which is perfect because, because of the sugar content, I don't want to leave it in the pan that long anyway. I've got some beautiful uh, local shiitake mushrooms. Shiitake mushrooms have so much umami. They, they, they add so much flavor very quickly, um, which I love that. And then finally, I'm going to do some Brussels sprouts because I love the way they crunch. But I'm not going to do the whole Brussels sprout, which will take forever to cook. I'm really just going to... So what I'm going to do is I'm taking out the core. And then I'm just going to separate out all the leaves. I'm just going to use some of the Brussels sprout leaves. All right, so all that brown stuff on the bottom is good. So we got some butter, some shallots, I'm sorry, some garlic, some shallots. And we're going to just let that toast very nice in the pan. Very quick. I don't want to get too much flavor. I don't want to get too much caramelization because what I'm doing is, you see, I'm going to start lifting all that good brown stuff from the bottom. And that's going to add a lot of flavor and color to what I'm doing. And very quickly, we're going to add some shiitake mushrooms. Now, I'm gonna check my pork, they're almost done. I'm gonna let that rest a but I am going to pop it in the oven. Hmm. Yeah. Just gonna let that stay warm. I don't wanna cook, it's really our almost 90% cooked, so I'm just gonna let that warm in the oven. And then really, we're just gonna finish it with the sauce here. So we have bourbon, a uh, little chicken stock, and a little heavy cream, and then a little really nice uh, whole grain mustard. So good. Okay. And I'm just going to build the sauce right into this pan. I'm not going to worry about it. just a little more butter in there, just a little salt. All right, bourbon time. Away from the flame. Mm. 
And the concept that I did before remains the same. So I add the bourbon first because I want to reduce it down a little, concentrate the flavor, but also evaporate the alcohol. The last thing you want, the worst thing in the world is to get a, a, a lovely steak or a piece of pork with a sauce that is warm that doesn't have the alcohol burned up because it will, the minute you try and eat it, it will go right up your nose and choke you. So it's really important to make sure the alcohol is burned up. And it's a very easy thing to do because alcohol will burn your nose. So all you do is like, <coughs> right now, it, it chokes me. So all you have to do is waft some of this smoke or this steam that comes off. The minute you can breathe deeply and smell it without choking, the alcohol is burned off. It's not very scientific. But do you see how dark that beautiful, you're getting that, that beautiful gravy color in there? Uh, and I haven't done anything to it. It's really just the caramelization from the bottom of the pan and a little bit of reduced bourbon. And just, if, if you think about like, the, the point of a sauce for a pork or meat, you want something that, that feels complex, deep, rich, like the bourbon has done all the work for you. I mean, they've aged this bourbon eight years in the pan. That's it, you don't have to do much more. You're really just kind of complimenting it, but the bourbon has got such a deep, rich flavor. Mm. Like I, I could drink it just like that, it's so good. But I'm gonna add some more stuff to it. Uh, so I've got about a cup of chicken stock. So once, once I can do this, right? I can smell it, I smell the bourbon, it feels good, but it doesn't burn my nose. I'm ready to add the chicken stock. So about a cup of chicken stock. And again, now I want to reduce the chicken stock. So I'm going to turn my heat back up to high and reduce that. At this point, I'm going to add my Brussels sprouts. So I want all that to kind of reduce together. Because I want to blanch the Brussels sprouts, but I don't want to kill them. I want them to have still a little bit of green and a little bit of crunch to it. Grain mustard we always had at the end. Uh, uh, grain mustard's got vinegar in it. Um, um, I learned this when I was cooking in France as a very young chef. Uh, you do not want to cook your mustard. So really the mustard, you kind of make sure everything's done. Uh, you season it, you flavor it, turn off the heat, um, you know, whisk in your mustard, and that's the last thing. So you really do the mustard all the minute to retain its freshness, its brightness, its vibrancy. Uh, or else it can get a little bit astringent and it can actually uh, fight with your sauce. So you don't want that. You want everyone to play nicely together. I'm gonna add a little bit of heavy cream. And you see what I'm doing is I'm kind of adding everything a little bit at a time. So I add one liquid, let it reduce. Add the next liquid, let it reduce. The heavy cream is going to be the penultimate liquid that I add. And of course, as I just said, the final thing I'm going to add is my grainy mustard. At this point, I can go ahead and start seasoning with a little sea salt. A little bit of black pepper. I like a lot of black pepper because I'm just that kind of person. I get the mushrooms. It's like it's like you know the the the, the mushrooms come up front. The bourbon is just coating my mouth, um, and the cream kind of just like helps to bridge everything together. And the one thing to to me because the pork is going to be very umami deep. There's a bourbon marinade in there. This is very bourbon heavy mushroom. To me, the the mustard is just that one little bright element that cuts through everything, and it's just going to lift everything up. Um, but again, bourbon, you know, I call it a bourbon grain mustard sauce, not a mustard bourbon sauce. I mean, not a grain mustard bourbon sauce. So it's really important that um, bourbon is the lead flavor, not the mustard. So I'm only going to just add a little bit of mustard to it. If you add too much, it can really overpower everything. I'm really going to start with like a teaspoon. I'm just going to add that in there. Vegetables, mushrooms in there, nice garlic. Mm. Turn it 
not the heat. And then we'll follow it up with my sauce. And I really want to sauce the entire pork chop, get it all in there. So simple. You know, somewhat French, but not really French food. Um, the bourbon makes it very Southern. Um, if you want to go a little crazy, you can actually add bacon to that uh, uh, mm -hmm. mushroom Brussels sprouts mix. I got it mm -hmm from my wife because she loves bacon. In, in some you know circles, bourbon is meant to like you know you shoot it and get drunk. Um, but this is a lovely dish, and you can actually pair it with a really nice bourbon. Um, and you can drink it on the rocks, you can make it into a cocktail. Like this in an old fashioned um, is just spot on. Um, so it, it turns bourbon into a much more of a, a, a complex culinary experience, you know, versus something where you just sit up and, and, and get drunk. So I love it. I love that bourbon has all these identities, um, and you can really use it in so many versatile ways. So. Um, I can't join you for a shot later, but I'm gonna do it right now. So thank you guys, everyone.